Hello friends and welcome to a new series. In this one we are going to build a simple CRUD application using Laravel 11, Inertia.js and React.js. So Laravel would be our backend program or application and React would be our front end application and Inertia would be the glue putting these two tools together. And if you've been following my channel, you know the previous playlist was about Laravel Inertia of Vue.js. And before that, we covered Laravel 11 itself. So this is going to be a similar playlist. And much like the previous one, we are not going to use a starter kit. So we can learn to set up our project by ourselves. Now, this is quite similar to the Vue.js process, but it's a bit different, especially in terms of setting up. So let's get started by installing a fresh new Laravel app. So in Laravel documentation, if you go to installation and then choose creating a Laravel project, you could either use a composer command to install a new Laravel project, or you can use the Laravel installer, which needs to be installed using a composer command. So I already have Laravel installer on my machine. So I'm going to use this command, but whichever command you use, it's going to be the same. So let's go to our terminal and start by typing Laravel new. So this will prompt us for the name and I'm going to call it Laravel Inertia React press enter. We don't want to use a starter kit, so no starter kit. And we don't need unit testing. We don't need Git repo. And when that's done, we want to choose SQLite for our database. And now our project is installed. So now we want to CD into that folder or project we just created and install React.js. So let's say npm i or install React and React DOM. So that's the first step. The second step is to install React plugin for Vite since Vite is our asset manager. Now, if you go back to Laravel documentation and go to asset bundling section, so this is where we would find more information on how to install a front end application like Vue or React. So I'm going to choose React here and we need to install this plugin. So I'm just going to copy this command and paste it in my terminal. And when that is done, I'm going to open our project in VS Code. All right, so this is our project. Next, we want to go to Inertia.js website and start by going through the server side setup and get our app ready. So first, we want to install Inertia.js. Let's copy this command and paste it in our terminal. So while that's running, let's go back to inertia documentation. And the next step is to create our root document. And by default, inertia would look for a document with the name app. So we are going to use that same name. So let's go back to our project, then open resources and views. And I'm just going to change the name of this welcome view to app. Then I'm going to delete everything here and start fresh. So we just have our HTML boilerplate. We can have a title, but Later on, I will add it dynamically, so I will just delete it from here. Next, I want to go back to the documentation and copy these two directives and paste it here. And also, we need to include the inertia directive within the body tags. So these directives are basically scripts that Inertia.js uses. So think of this inertia directive right here as our div with the ID of app. That's what we would usually do when we just have a React app or a Vue app. Anyway, let's leave this open because we need to still make some changes. Let's go back to the documentation. And the next step is to create our inertia middleware. So let's just copy this command and back to our terminal. Let's just paste it here. So when that's done, we need to tell our app that we are using this middleware by adding it to the web array. So let's just copy this section and then go back to our project. We want to go to our bootstrap folder and then app.php. So in here we have our application configuration. So we have this function that is used to add middlewares to our app. So we want to use the inertia middleware here. So I'm going to paste that code from the documentation. Basically, we are just adding this handle inertia requests to our web middlewares. Make sure you import this one from app HTTP and middleware. And we will get to this document later on, but you can find it here. It's under app HTTP and middleware. And here it is. We just have some information about Inertia.js and we will get to it later in this series. But for now, I'm just going to close both of these documents. All right, let's go back to the documentation and we are done with the server side. Let's go back up and go for the client side setup. Now down here, we have installing dependencies. So we are going to choose React. So first we need to install this dependency. I'm going to copy the command and paste it here. And then we need to initialize our app. So again, make sure React is selected up here and copy everything from the documentation and go back to our project, open app.js and just paste everything here. All right, so let's see what we have here. We are importing 
two functions, one from inertia react and one from react dom. So we are already familiar with this part. So when we want to create our react app, we would use the create root function from react. And then that function would take our root element to render it. So that's what we are doing down here. We are just creating our react app, but creating this react app is inside create inertia app, and it is part of the setup option. So this option would create the front end application for us. If it was Vue.js, we would create a view app. If it was Svelte or other front end programming languages, then we would use their function. And we also have this resolve option that would just resolve the components for us. And by default, you notice it is looking for a pages directory, then the name of the component and the extension of JSX. So the first thing we need to do is to change the extension of this app.js to app.jsx because we actually have an element here, which is not JavaScript. So that's the first change we need to make. Next, we need to go to our Vite config file and tell Vite that we are using React. So if we go back to Laravel documentation for a moment, you notice here they show us how to use it. So we just have to import React from the plugin we already installed and then tell Vite to use this plugin. So I'm just gonna copy this import statement and paste it in Vite config file. And after this Laravel plugin, I'm going to say use React just by typing the name and adding the parentheses. Now, since we are using React, which is an SPA, we don't need to tell Laravel to look for our CSS file. We just want to say where is our JS file. So we can get rid of this part and just leave the JS directory or path as a text for this input. And of course, notice this is still saying app.js, but we've already changed the extension to JSX. So make sure you include that X here, otherwise you would get an error. So let's save this one and close it. Next, we want to go to our app.blade.php, which is our root document. And first thing we want to tell Vite to look for an app.jsx. Again, this by default is looking for a JS file, but now we have a JSX file. And then we want to add another directive here. So if we go back to Laravel documentation and just scroll down a bit, you notice we have another directive here that is Vite React Refresh. So let's just copy this and paste it before this Vite directive. And this is again in Laravel documentation. So this part is important because if you add this directive after this Vite directive, you would get an error and the pages would not render. So make sure this is first and Vt is second. All right, so that's our setup. Let's close this one and start creating this pages folder in our JS directory. So I'm going to create a pages folder here. And within that, I would create a home page. And this is just a simple React component. So I just want to say export default function and let's call it home. And we just want to return maybe some basic template here. So let's just have an H1 that says hello user. And for now, this is our home page. Next, we want to go to our web.php and edit this route because we are still returning a blade view, but we don't work with Blade anymore. We want to return this home component, which is a React component. So instead of using the view function, we want to use the inertia helper function that would take the name of the view we want to return. Now in the next video, we will talk about this in more detail, but I just want to have something on the page. So when we serve our application, we can see it's working. All right, so with that change, we should be able to serve our application and see if it works. So I'm gonna say PHP artisan serve in my terminal and then open a new tab and just run npm run dev. So let's go to a browser now and open our local development server and we get our homepage. So it is working and that is basically the setup. But before we end this video, I wanna do two more things here. First, I wanna install Tailwind CSS. So if we go to Tailwind CSS and then installation, we have these framework guides and we want to choose Laravel. Then we want to copy these commands and paste them in our terminal. And while that's running, I'm gonna go back to the Tailwind documentation and copy these directories or paths. Then go back to our project. We should have a Tailwind config file, which is down here, and I want to paste those directories here. Now we don't have a view component. Let's just delete this. And I want to duplicate this line and change one of these to JSX. We don't actually have JS, but I'm just adding it here in case we added some JS with Tailwind classes in it. So let's save this one. And next we want to go to our CSS 
directory and open our app.css. So you could copy these Tailwind directives and paste them here. But I have my custom CSS classes, which is done through Tailwind that I can copy and paste it there. So if you want these classes, the link is in the description. So I'm just going to copy all of this and paste it here. And this is just some CSS classes that I often use. So I made it into a separate document. Now we want to tell our app to use this CSS file. So let's go to our app.jsx. At the very top, I'm just going to import that CSS document. So we want to go up one folder, select CSS, and then app.css, save it. And then on our homepage, I want to add the class title to this H1. So now if we go back to our website, we have that text with the styles applied. And the last thing I want to do for this video is just add an alias for the directories. So in your application, you might want to call a certain folder many, many times, but you don't want to call the relative path every time. So we can make aliases for that. And again, we are using wheat, so we can add our aliases here. Inside wheat config, I'm going to use the resolve option and then say aliases and choose an at sign, which is going to correspond to our resources folder and then JS. So later on in our app, every time I want to call resources.js, I would just use the at sign. And that's all. So this is how we can set up a fresh Laravel 11 with Inertia.js and React.js. We just have to take a few steps and install a few dependencies and we get our app up and running. So in the next video, we will talk about routes and pages in a bit more detail.